one thing that, that photographers get all the time, I mean, it, weekly I get the question, you know, and this is either by DPA students or, or just friends of mine or, if I, you know, if I, we're meeting people for the first time. They're, everyone always asks, what's the best camera? What's the best camera? And I, I'm not, you know, in some cases they're, they're, they have disposable income and they're looking to buy the best camera or they just want to know. And the, the pat answer, uh, what we always come back with, the best camera is the one you have with you. Now, if you spend $6,000 on a big honking DSLR with the big lenses and all this other stuff and, and you buy all this equipment, if it's too big, bulky, and heavy, and, 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 and cumbersome for you to take to the beach with the kids, it's not a good camera for that scenario. So the best camera is the one you have with you. So that's where point-and-shoot cameras come in. I've already pointed out that I quite literally carry a point-and-shoot with me all the time. And uh, there are a number of instances where a, a smaller, uh, more compact, lighter, and less obtrusive camera will actually help you out. And there, it, now, it, it used to be point-and-shoot cameras, were, quite frankly, were pretty bad. The, the, the resolution was bad in terms of digital cameras. If you go back to the days of film point-and-shoot cameras, it, the, the features and functions were, were pretty terrible. I mean, the, the point-and-shoot cameras were the first. Uh, point-and-shoot cameras had autofocus before DSLR cameras did. But they, they never really worked very well. They were, they were pretty horrible. Now, uh, I've got one uh, I'm going to show you t tonight, a little Panasonic here, that uh, the, the, um, it's got a 14 megapixel camera. That, that, is, uh, that rivals some of the, uh, a lot of the DSLRs out there. So there's uh, a number of instances where you're going to get very good quality out of a point and shoot and be able to actually carry that with you with a, with a kid on your arm or, or uh, uh, there's a lot of instances where you can't bring big cameras. I, I myself was in... I was shooting a, in a store once uh, last year, and I had a couple of DSLRs hanging on my shoulders, and I just happened to have a, uh, uh, it's not quite a point and shoot, but I, I did have this uh, the little GF1, which is a smaller, it's sort of an in-between. It's not quite a point and shoot, but it's not, it's not a DSLR. And the store security came up and said, you can't shoot with those cameras in here. You, you need permission and that sort of thing. Uh, he, he said, you, you, you can only shoot with, uh, with a point and shoot. And I just I, I said, is this one okay? And he said, yeah, that's fine. Now the the quality of, of the GF1 is as good as as many point shoots, or sorry, as as good as many DSLRs. But because it was much smaller, much more compact, he just let me shoot away. So there's a number of times when uh, it'll it'll get you out of a bind, and and some pros are starting to carry uh, the GF1 as a as a uh, uh, you know take on location camera because it's it's unobtrusive. You can, you can, you know, it's small enough. You can put this in a jacket pocket. So let me, let me, uh, let me start. We'll go through some of the photos, and then I'll uh, outline some of the hardware that I've got for you tonight, and uh, and we'll take some questions along the way. 